I just uh, ran across a brain imaging study done by uh, Sam Harris, among others. Uh, it was just published in the scientific journal Annals of Neurology. And uh, what they did was they had people go into an fMRI machine and uh, they measured the uh, activity of certain regions of their brain as they presented the subjects with uh, certain propositions. Um, you know, biographical things like your hair is brown, uh, geographical facts, um, ethical statements like murder is wrong, um, and uh, even mathematical equations like 2 plus 2 equals 4. And they asked the patient to respond, or the subject to respond, whether or not they believed disbelieved or were uncertain about the truth of the statements. And um, what they found was that um, even when we're doing uh, mathematical um, cognitive tasks, we're still relying on emotional centers of the brain to judge the truth or falsity of the equation. So certainly the content of an equation is being worked out in the prefrontal cortex, which is usually associated with logic and rational thought and so on. But the, the judgment as to whether or not that is a true equation or a false equation comes from an evolutionarily older area of the brain associated more with, with pleasure and reward and punishment and emotion than it is with you know, actual logic or, or intelligence. Um, so, the implication of this is that emotion and, and reason uh, are not as easily separated as um, some may think. And I think what this leads us to uh, conclude, I, I guess, is that, well, something like objective morality is simply impossible from a neurological standpoint. A human being, um, at least as a human being's brain is currently wired, is just not capable of making intelligent, uh, rational judgments without um, relying in some way on emotional judgments. Um, the brain is just wired in such a way that there's a continual, you know, loop of feedback between the two regions of the brain, and we simply can't navigate a world meaningfully without having emotions tied to our rational intelligence. Um, they're not two separate brain activities such that we could, if only we had strong enough willpower, um, completely disengage ourselves from our own emotional biases to pay attention to, you know, dry intellectual facts. Uh, I always tended to think that, um, you know, there's plenty of facts out there. And the facts we choose to pay attention to are the ones that fit with our sort of um, emotional baselines, our emotional biases, and we sort of construct the world out of the facts that uh, our emotions tell us are worth paying attention to, and we ignore the facts that uh, we really don't want to see. And that's just how people build worldviews for the most part. Um, and, you know, we can be aware of that and try to correct for it, but uh, inevitably, individual human beings make moral decisions based on emotions and not based on logic. Because human beings are emotional creatures. And to, to kind of, to even ask or uh, suppose that there could be such a thing as objective morality, I think is a contradiction in terms. Morality is fundamentally emotional. Objectivity is fundamentally an intellectual activity. Uh, and to try to meld the two together, uh, or actually we're not trying to meld the two together, we're trying to convert morality and emotion into this intellectual uh, system of rules, I just don't think it's possible. Uh, and in fact, it appears that brain science uh, agrees with me. I'm going to read the uh, Sam Harris's conclusion. What I find most interesting about our results is the suggestion that our view of the world must pass through a bottleneck in regions of the brain generally understood to govern emotion, reward, and primal feelings like pain and disgust. While evaluating mathematical, ethical, or factual statements requires very different kinds of processing, 
accepting or rejecting these statements seems to rely upon a more primitive process that may be content neutral. I think it has long been assumed that believing that 2 plus 2 equals 4 and believing that George Bush is the President of the United States have almost nothing in common as cognitive operations. But what they clearly do have in common is that both representations of the world satisfy some process of truth testing that our brains continually perform. I think this is yet another result, in a long line of results, that calls the popular opposition between reason and emotion into question.